Hey guys, it's Ryan and today's video is going to be a big one. I'm going through more or less every unit in Tunguska and I'll talk a bit about them and if they're worth considering. It's your standard sectorial overview. If you enjoy my content, remember to like and subscribe for more. This was a lot of work to put together. Starting off with an odd unit, or well, an odd one to me, only recently I've been convinced of the authorised bounty hunter's qualities as some of our cheapest regular orders in Tunguska, decent corner guards or the base of a cheap Harris. Its stat line is fine with CC 16, BS 12, Fizz 10, Whip 13, Arm 1 and BTS 3 with booty reroll and stealth. I find booty a little odd with the fact it has a wide range of weapons with combi rifles, boarding shotguns, sniper rifles, SMGs and red furies. For what it's worth I think I like the sniper rifle, SMG and boarding shotgun for templates, range and that booty can layer on a lot of buffs to those profiles. Their fire teams are okay with the ability to hire us with motorised bounty hunters, something I think I would only probably do as a duo to lose the impetuous on a bike for a little bit or bring in a good wild card for cheap and a potent Harris slash duo. I'm beginning to like these guys, so maybe consider them in your lists. Clockmakers are the nomad faction engineers, and they're pretty great, especially for a faction with structure-based heavy infantry, warbands, a solid tag, and a huge amount of bots, both linkable and solo. It's got whip 15 for that rem press units, and burst 2 gizmo kits for everything else. Only BS 11, so it's like an 80% chance to land a shot, and 30% chance to land both shots. This means you can post them near a standing bot or a hollow man to pick it back up. With the good whip and access to some bots, your robots are in safe hands. If I must gripe, and I'll get into it more later, clockmakers do not fire team Tunguska, which would be lovely in a hollow man fire team. We do get something similar elsewhere. Dactaris are your standard faction doctor. Not linkable, whip 13 to pick people up in a cube heavy faction. It's not bad. Not great, but it's only one of two med kits in the faction, but everything you're putting forward beside Cursors and Fiddler is going to be structure. You can take these if you're worried about them, but I don't think it's worth it. I dislike Safronza, not because he's bad, no, because I'm bitter he killed my dogs. So yes, he's not bad, he's a wild card with hollow mask, a viral rifle, adhesive launcher plus one burst, nanopulsor, Heavy Pistol and a Para CCW-6, which is all very nasty with the solid stat line he possesses with CC-19, PS-13 and ARM-2 being standouts alongside his equipment of an X-Visor, Courage, Dogged and Stealth to really get in there and be a pickle. Viral rifles are lethal and pretending to be something like a squishy tune killer could lead to a nasty surprise. As a wild card, I'd maybe plop him in pretending to be a cheer killer alongside a Voshtok or a Grenzer Harris, or maybe in the name Inc. Harris, really let people focus on the bot, close the gamp, and then get ganked by Safron's as viral. His other options are the Hollow Projector with Surprise Attack minus 3, which is nice but not something I think I'd use. I'm not sure what you could effectively hide him as, as he'd have to get from the drop zone to the midfield with only a rifle and marker state, which is doable, but not something I like doing. Overall, I think Safronza is a pretty effective as a surprise FU. So Fiddler is great, technically a worse engineer than the Clockmaker, but she still offers a lot. Statline is an interesting one, the move 6-4, so she can keep up with bots and the Salamandra. CC18 with CC plus one burst, immunity critical, breaker pistols, and a power CCW minus three, and D charges, which makes her for a good but not great melee user. You're definitely punching down here as a knight will just roll her unless she can gang up on them, which is fairly likely to be fair. Moving on, BS12 contender plus one burst and NWI, so not a prime gunfighter, but it's fine when you have bots to make your gunfights more in your favour. Viz12 of dodge plus three plus one inch and drop bears make getting up the board much easier. She is a whip 14 engineer, she's a great pocket engineer for that knee mink link or cheer killers with one of many wildcard bots or even solo with her own bots, or Zon bots to pick up structure units along the way. Finally, she is arm 1, BTS 3, and no wind incapacitation, so some bulk but not some massive amounts of it. And the choices of profiles are either super jump in the fire team option, or climbing plus with her bots. Let's look at those for some more contacts. First off, with climbing plus 6-4 move, the bots can keep up with Fiddler and pretty much go anywhere, and with a Vulcan shotgun, the bots are going to find the worst place to go, 
and start raining templates from the amazing close range gun. Or if you know they're going to die, YOLO them into things with that explode. Not super lethal, but definitely more damage. Now the bots are optional, but they are a good option. In, in Tunguska you really could take her harassed or solo with the bots and either could do some serious lifting. Really consider her. Hecklers are a fantastic unit thanks to its profiles and decent stat line. They rock BS-12, Whip-13, Arm-1, BTS-3, Camel-1 use, 4 deployment, plus 4 inches, stealth and surprise attack minus 3. It's nice and cheap, probably better than our actual skirmishers, but that could be apples to oranges. Profile-wise, we have four options, but really two that will be usually considered. First is the Jammer Fast Pander profile, and in my hacking video, link in the cards, I talk about the Fast Pander play and the potentially turn one hacking area you can get with this unit, and it's pretty wild that with just using camel for a lot of free movement and then plop down a panda with the zone of control and then you have hacking zone of control on top of the koala so a potentially 16 inch reach away from the hecklers for your hacking. This can be used to aggressively take down key units with your hackers and this is all without so mentioning the solid anti-skirmisher and bear tool that is the jammer. You can knock out even unhackable total immune units as it's a comms attack which doesn't require being hackable. You can also intuitive attack to break a camel skirmisher out of their marker state or be isolated and break out of their marker state. The other profile to consider, although not as good to be honest, is the killer hacking device loadout as it gives you a specialist option and repeatable marker state to make it a bit more of a midfield terror. Error. It does give you some additional bite for that BS-12. I think it's worth considering this profile, but you're considering it over the Fast Panda Jammer profile. People really like hecklers and two are often found in lists. Jelena Kovac I've talked about in the reinforcements briefly and passed the buck to this video, so I guess I'm going to talk about her here. I like Kovac. She is a pretty great secure Tate character with all the stuff that makes secure Tate's good and then she picks up a lot of that slack. She's BS-12 but gains an X-Visor, Triangulated Fire and access to Breaker and Multi-Rifles to do a good bit of damage. With Whip-14 she now also gains Sensor, Spec Ops, Veteran and Tack Aware to make her a decent midfielder that can help escort big guns and go push a button. As she come across Camel she can quickly remove that fairly easily, probably discovering on flat 14s after all mods or just discovering everything within zone of control. She also has Arm 1 BTS 3, so slightly more survivable than a security for a solid profile overall. What makes this all better is that she's a wild card of pure coring with securities. Not sure if I would use her here with a core of securities, maybe a Harris or something, like a security Fuhrback, Jelena and Perseus. That could be interesting, I guess. I do think she has more use in replacing what we lost with Tachi Moto. Tactical awareness is great, even if it killed O12 Prestige. And I really like the idea of Jelena and Cursors as a duo. Overall, Jelena is nice, but I don't see her as often in Tunguska because of points. Consider her a pretty niche pick. Mary Problems is the Corvus Belly mandated nomad uber hacker woman for the nomad sectorials. And to be honest, I like her a lot. Jazz, Uhau and Zoe can be better because they can link, but I think Mary Problems is still decent. I do think and agree with others that she might be struggling a bit at the moment. Let's talk stats and it might become apparent why she is looked at somewhat poorly and why she does have some strengths worth considering. She rocks 4-4 four, four move with climbing plus and forward deployment plus four inches. So starts in the midfield, but slow, BS-11 with an SMG zapper, which is a large EM template, and a pitcher. Not bad, not great. She also has min minus six to help, but I think you're using Mary wrong if you're getting into gunfights, but she can vaguely defend herself. This is further reinforced with Fizz-10 and Dodge-3, which is a bit of a thing in this sectorial. This is fine to avoid mines and hopefully templates, she has Arm 1, BTS 6 and no extra runes, which means at 28 points she's pretty brittle unit and for some this is a big turn off. Now, the good point is that she's whip 14 and has both a hacking device with the upgrade to Oblivion plus 1 burst, which is burst 3, damage 16, AP, isolating on a failsafe, with a killer hacking device with AP on the Trinity. These are some pretty substantial upgrades and it makes her a really nasty hacker to come up against. And I think this is where she shines. With pretty good hacking setup, although lacking 10 bots, I, I think you could utilize a heckler or a pitcher to directly hack the target without putting her at risk. Even take on other hackers fairly easily thanks to them getting a minus three to hack back via the repeater. 
Cyber Mask can also make her unhackable and unstrikable until discovered. Now she doesn't have to be in the midfield for this, it's pretty hostile to her but if you're clever you can keep her safe or just plonk her in your drop zone. However the whole cycle of snipe and hide is also replicatable by interventors who are mildly cheaper, less spicy hackers but solid enough to render her kind of moot. It's a bit of a downer to end on but I think consider her as an upgrade from a heckler or another midfield piece. I think there is something here, you just have to test it. Miranda is the third and final named power girl trio of Tunguska and like Jelena, she is a named version of a generic profile with a similar stat line to the authorised bounty hunters but with CC19 and CC-6, she is a respectable in melee with that monofilament CCW. It's enough to act defensively or really punch down. BS12 with min minus 6 is also fairly nice to help keep her safe, but with only one arm, BTS3 and no additional wounds, it's not great. Whip 13 with specialist, operative and stealth does help make her a nice button pusher and a wild card counts as bounty hunter. And her, with her stats, I feel like she's going to protect a Harris, but not with her melee, more her profile. She has templates in all her profiles with a multi-rifle, combi rifle and emitter which are my two favourite profiles, although I think Perseus, Wolf and Spectre do her job much better. There are plenty of specialists for this job. I don't think I would consider Ashcroft, but I don't think I don't recommend her. The motorised bounty hunter was a long time saviour of Tunguska and while they now compete with the Zeelandkrieger, I think these guys are worth taking. Why? Well, it's an impetuous 8-6 unit, which is very fast, min minus 3, cheap shooter with BS-12, arm 1 and BTS-3, with booty reroll, which can make even the cheap 9-point profile fairly spicy if you get a heavy machine gun or a multi-sniper rifle. Profile-wise, I wouldn't rely on booty, so I find something you're happy with running and you have three solid choices here. I prefer the SMG Chain Colt Plus One Burst as it's the cheapest and a real threat. I don't mind shoving something worth 9 points into something costly and giving them a fork. Although the Red Fury is really cheap and also worth considering. I want to touch on fire teams as I have a quick comment. Since this is doable, you can keep the bike impetuous and use the fire team duo to advance up the board, then use the impetuous later in the game to do some damage while the duo partner goes off and does something useful like Jelena. Overall, a really solid disposable unit that Tungus can use for the longest time and now in the age of the Zeelandkrieger, I still think they're worth it to get up the board and fulfil that warband role. The Puppet Technica company is one of the most iconic units of Tunguska. It's also one of the few peripheral control units which means the Puppet Master can sit all the way back while his little silhouette one robots do damage and die in his stead. The Puppet Master is pretty meh on his own with BS11 and Whip14 that could be a hacker, but you're probably taking the cheapest one for counterintelligence, or you're spending 2 points more to get a main layer to prevent drop zone attacks. There's not much here, but for 12 points it's a cheap order and counterintelligence is always worth having. Now the bots, and this is where it gets contentious. Some people don't really consider them competitive, and I can see the argument in that Tunguska is tight on points and you're spending more points on a unit and not getting more orders, which is sometimes hard to get in Tunguska. The bots are pretty decent though with BS12 and 8 plus 1 burst on all its guns, Fist 10 and Dodge plus 3, Whip 14 with a Forward Observer boarding shotgun loadout, Arm 1, BTS 3 and Structure 1 with Transmutation Structure which gives it a second wound for cheap and a slightly worse profile. There are three profiles and I've mentioned the boarding shotgun one which I quite like as a fast specialist in its own right and can help out doing missions as they're short enough to get to button safely. If you want firepower you can take the Burst 5 Red Fury for the additional 16 points which is not bad but I'm not a fan of him for an expensive damage 13 shock spitfire basically. The last and better gun fighting profile in my opinion is the BS Shock AP Marksman Rifle which is nice and will be my go to shooter when I need to escort my forward observer to push buttons. It's 38 points for a bucket of wounds and an ok shooter, it lacks the order generation but that is also an advantage as if you lose the bot, you don't lose the order. The Puppet Master is worth taking in most if not all lists but the bots are worth considering if you have the point spare. Raul is another one I've talked about in the reinforcements but it's still the same point supply. He's a tough if lacking shock immunity brawler with some of the best melee in Tunguska, followed closely behind in, by Perseus and Wolfgang. In the non-reinforcement context he has three profiles, one of them is an irregular parachutist, combat jumper with a boarding shotgun, 
PS12 Midmind 6 drop bears on 13s with an EMCCW and a slightly redundant but nice DACCW. I like this one specifically as it's a really nice side attack piece that can fork or run in and throw hands with people, potentially imposing a minus 9 if they decide to shoot you as you enter melee. His two profiles are regular and fire team options with differences being super jump, both have multi rifles and that drop bears which I think work better for getting close as you can either shoot your target, throw a drop bear or run into melee. The FTO version is a wild card counting as grenzers and can add his melee power to any fire team unlike Perseus. The alternative is the FTO 2 who can form the naming fire team and get super jump. Niche rule, but this can be a wild card as well, but you can't use the FTO version to form the naming fire team. It's a confusing rule, but it is on the wiki. Seriously consider Raul as he can bully a lot of things, but watch out for shock rounds. After the 12 other light infantry, we finally get to our line troopers. Zercuritates is an interesting unit that make up the backbone of our list to some extent. They also contribute to why Tunguska is often called Red Pano. Why? Well, they're BS-12, which is very Pano. Whip 14 with Veteran, which makes both the Hacker and Lieutenant profile much better. It's also Arm 1 and BTS-0, so good thing it's Veteran. So the big thing here is that they're a premium light infantry, so if you go loss of Lieutenant, you've still got 4 or 5 orders cutting around. Anyway, you have the usual assortment of line trooper stuff, heavy machine guns, multi-sniper rifles, hackers, paramedics, and a comlink specialist plus one order, which is all very nice. With BS-12, this makes for a solid fighting core if you want to. We do have three profiles that are pretty good with a repeater and either a combi or boarding shotgun, which is a nice profile if you desperately need a repeater to move up. And finally, though, is our lovely Fuhrback profile, one of two in Tunguska with that. This is a potential BS-15 Burst 3 Fuhrback, which in ARO is likely to go down, but is very much the Cataran Doctrine, which is if you take a fight with me and lose, the Shadow Realm awaits. I consider this a softer ARO piece, or maybe even an active turn shooter to clear off and punish silly mistakes. I like it, and the model is dope, so I'm going to run it. You'll end up with between 2 and 5 securitates in the list, in all honesty. The Paramedic and the Hacker are great, as are the Lieutenant and Decoys. You'll see them in cores both impure and pure, alongside Grenzers and Inventors. I'm prefacing this with, I like Cheer Killers, but they are not in a good place right now. So Cheer Killers got added in for and are Tunguska's attempt at a Warband-esque unit, and I don't think it worked. Or is it a Tunguska's attempt at a premium light infantry tripper? Well, I don't think that worked either. Does it work as cheap filler for Grenzers? Yes, but I don't think you're going to take that link. Let's talk stats to figure out what's gone wrong and what Corpus Belly needs to sort. Cheer Killer's Rock 4-4 move, which is not bad, CC 19 with Martial Arts 1, which is not great at all. The Knight Commander is CC 18, but at least gets Martial Arts 2 to get it above the 20 needed for melee. BS 12 is nice, but Secure Tates exist with better guns. Fizz 12, Dodge plus 3 with Super Jump, which is really nice to be honest and means they can keep up with Fiddler. Whip 13 is standard for Tunguska and finally one arm with no extras. This is largely fine except for the CC. The profiles are all okay, not offensive to be honest. The Light Shotgun Pulsar is the same cost as the Secure Tate with Combi Rifles and I'm not sure which one I'd take, all things being equal. But it's not equals and Tates offer a lot more. The SMG Nano Pulsar is not bad, but a point more expensive, and also has a specialist option as well. To be honest, I think I prefer the light shotgun one, as if I want the AP, I'm going to look at the AP rifle profile with the Nano Pulsar and the plus one burst multi pistol, which does a lot of things for this, but it's 19 points, which is a lot for this unit. But it isn't awful, it's burst 3 AP out to 16 inches, with burst 2 in melee, DA, shock or AP, and that's not bad. Damage 12, sure, but it's either versatility or damage 13 shock, which honestly isn't much better. This is a profile that would benefit from any buffs, as this is a really nice profile and maybe worth using as a fire team starter. The final profile, and one that is pretty nice, as it's our only source of MSV2 in the sectorial, and it's a shock marksman rifle, and MSV2 Nano Pulsar for 25 points, which is not awful. Fire team wise, I mean, I don't know what's going on here. The Cheer Killer link with Grenzers and Fiddler, who gets purity, but Grenzers don't. So there is no point in running Grenzers here, since you can and probably should put them in a secure take core so you can get paramedic and hackers in your core. So it leaves Cheer Killers with wild cards and Fiddlers, and that's not bad. Cyclone, MSV2, Cheer Killer, and Fiddler could do nice work. 
but very quickly run into the issue that this fire team is entirely redundant. As you know, if you want a rem fiddler and melee protection, we have the name ant Harris, Holloman Harris, and the security Harris with better access to specialists than to your killers. And we get wildcard grenzers who are only slightly worse MSV troopers. This is a unit that needs looked at and maybe just combine it with a name ink and bounty hunter Harris. I am seriously considering doing a video on fixing cheer killers and other units as I do like them, but I won't be running them competitively unless I'm being spiteful. Neat models, but they need a reason to run and I don't have that. Let's move on from the negativity of cheer killers onto a really solid unit. Interventors are the hackers of Tunguska and they're the spires from hell. Their stat line is the epitome of hackers are only good because they are equipment as they are fusiliers but better stats with whip 15 and BTS 9 which basically reads make me hack because I will Baja brain blast anything shy of combined army nonsense. That moves us on to the profiles and there's only really four choices here. Boarding shotgun versus combi rifle. I prefer the boarding shotgun as I can template rushes because you're going down as well because as mentioned I am spiteful. Next choice is fast panda or not which is a very nice deployable repair that might not be needed here but you never know. And do you want to be a fairly obvious lieutenant with only one whip 15 lieutenant choice? You do get multiple availability but it's still broadcasted. The final choice here is between the hacking device plus or the killer hacking device with trinity minus three. Which is an interesting choice to be honest as hacking device plus you can make use of all the pictures, koalas, parachuting and repairs to block out MSV units with white noise. I probably would just take this because it's got the usual complement of hacking programs and if it's the lieutenant and you win the role you can immediately go hide in cyber mask. Finally the killer hacking device is pretty lethal and a quick online check against the Knight of Santiago killer hacking device it really is likely to win the role thanks to the big swing in whip and BTS. You could also use it as a pseudo surprise attack hiding inside your mask until a repeater lands near something with a hacking device. Good options here, plus linkable with secure tates. So in general, I make the recommendation here if you have the points for it in your list, and depending on the shooter in the core, it might be worth going in pure. Consider this recommended. This is my fourth sectorial, and it is my fourth war core entry. Do I repeat myself? No, but also yes. It's three points. Do you have a slot? Do you have the points, possibly in Tunguska, then you take it. It's worth it to flash out attackers and maybe kill an attack run or waste orders. 10 out of 10, best 3 point model. Grenzers are the second iconic Tunguskan unit and like most Nomad medium infantry, they're really good. Statline is BS13 with MSV1 which is our only really solid visor in the sectorial, whip 13, arm 3, BTS 6 and shock immunity. Really you're hoping you win or you're going down. Profiles is where we raise some concerns. Now we have 7 options but really only maybe 3 or 4 actual options. Before I whinge they all have this weird quirk where they have 2 pistols, not plus 1 burst, 2 different pistol types. Why? Who knows? Okay, so the profiles that really matter are the Missile Launcher, Marksmanship, Sniper and the NCO Forward Observer and maybe the non-Marksmanship Sniper if you're running out of points. So why do these ones matter? Well, a core linked Marksmanship Sniper Rifle is a brutal thing to try and take on, requiring a tag or min minus 6. The Missile Launcher is the same but less good. No Marksmanship, but I mean Burst 2, MSV1, Missile Launcher probably on 14s is not something I want to deal with either. It competes with the Hollow Man missile launcher and that's more durable but can be smoked out so there is a decision there. Finally is the NCO option which is our only NCO option. It may be worth taking instead of Jelena to move a fire team up the board more effectively and it's a specialist. I can see this in a name ink Harris or a Cursor Jewel to maintain the ability to get O12 prestige. The other combi rifle profile is fine but anything else would be better, same with Red Fury. Grenzer fire teams are good, but not the one with the cheer quellers. See above, no, but they get three of them with wild card, and that's pretty neat to be honest, as you can take some solid profiles and place them in solid fire teams like the Holoman, the Name Inc, the Bounty Hunter, and the Secure Tape fire team to give them some legs. A burst three, BS 13, Marksmanship Sniper is very solid in the active turn, if squishy, but sometimes you need that range for a Holoman Spitfire or a Voshtok to follow up on. Grenzer Snipers are a staple of Tunguska. I'm yet to try the other profiles, but give them a shot and they could be worth it. Zonautica are another iconic Tunguskan unit and have a lot going for it, as for a while it was the only bike in Tunguska with the unique trait of being an AI motorcycle, so it's a robot too. 
This is a proper motorbike unit, so it can still choose impetuous or cover as needed. Stats wise, it's a solid medium infantry bifer with 8 4 moves, so very fast. BS 12, min minus 3 with impetuous, so no cover until you choose otherwise. Fizz 12, whip 13, arm 3 when mounted, 2 when not, BTS 3, and 1 wound. Fast and kind of squishy, but somewhat hard to hit. When you're mounted, you get a chain rifle and smoke grenade launcher. Both are nice kit, but not necessarily wonderful. 12s to drop smoke is fine, and chain rifles are fine but dicey when you only have one wound and cost 20 odd points. When the biker dismounts it gets a little more interesting as it becomes a silhouette 5 corner guard which I mean if you don't mind losing a little speed could be a good throwaway attack piece. With a chain rifle, min minus 3 and a smoke grenade launcher, stick it prone and it's no better than a silhouette 3 model so you can use it to defend your DZ and push it forward later. So what about the profiles for the bikers? Well we have three, a boarding shotgun, combi rifle hacker or spitfire. I'm not a massive fan of the boarding shotgun, if you need a template go back and look at the motorized bounty hunter, the boarding shotgun is also just redundant. The combi hacker is nice as it's a fast, a specialist and can shoot well enough or fork your opponent with either a chain rifle, combi rifle or a spotlight. Which is very good to have. You can also reach the midfield in an order or two as well to push buttons which is also really good. Finally it's a spitfire which can be very nice fast gunner which when you're in the midfield can dismount and you can use the two of them to go clear a path for your other units. Overall, a fast attack unit that is seriously worth considering. Corsa Borax are another reason Tunguska is considered Red Pano as it's a huge shooter and one of the quickest ways to get to burst 6 in the game. With that, let's look at the stats. CC19 with a heavy pistol to ward off warbands, BS13 with BS attack plus 1 burst, min minus 3 which is also very nice, Fizz14 which is a little high but it's nice to avoid templates, Arm5, BTS6, 2 wounds, immunity shock and terrain total. All very nice heavy infantry stuff on a Silhouette 5 model. So profile wise we have two and I've only really considered one. We have the LT option for both and without chain of command I don't think it's for me. The lesser profile in my opinion has a 360 degree visor, Mark 12 and SMG for 57 points which is pricey and a Spitfire Harris is probably just as good in a gunfight. I feel like this is a suppressive fire piece. I don't think it's worth it when you get Perseus or something else to do that job which is a niche job no less. I'd rather take the HMG version which is 3 points cheaper, 1 burst more and better range fans to fight your way out of the drop zone when you don't guide a missile strike or salamandra it. Which comes to one of the main reasons people don't like the Kurza, not that I entirely agree but I do get the reason. The Kurza is 57 points for HMG and its cheapest duo is 56 points for a specialist in Ashcroft. Which is not bad but the salamandra is 72 points. 2 SWC, more durable for a burst 5 better gun, so the question becomes why not the Salamandra? And it's a good question to ask. So why the cursor over the one of the best tags in the game? Well I argue that tags need a lot of support. Support Tunguska has and can bring but it costs points, probably 30 odd points. So again, why Kurza? Well he can duo and pull a specialist along, such as Jelena who brings tactical awareness, Grenzer Swift NCO and Forward Observer, and then Raul who is a specialist and is good in melee, so Cursor can walk up, pat them on the back and send them on their ways. You can take the Cursor solo in smaller point games or reinforcements where he has much less competition. Finally he can harass which is another reason on why Cursors. Holloman allowed two Cursors in the fire team, and we'll get into them in a second but it can give Cursor 10 bots and hell and even ARO pieces and Perseus the melee powerhouse and a sample zone. Hell, he could core here, which I don't think I'd recommend, but HMG, Cursor, Hollowman Firewall, and Stempler FTO Harris is bang on 100 points with burst 6 HMG, with 5 wounds, 3 of which have rem press behind them, templates, and flash pulses to defend the team. It could be a seriously tough fight to take them on directly. Pano Doctrine through and through. With hecklers and other midfield stuff, you really start to build a solid list there. It's not cheap. But that's Tunguska. Anyway, consider the cursor. You'll need to justify him over the Salamandra, but I think it's doable. Hollow Men are the next iconic Tunguska unit, and they are known as bunny hopping gamers and the most grimdark thing in Infinity. Hollow Men are the line in heavy infantry of Tunguska, but unlike other factions they do not link with line infantry which doesn't really matter. They do get Stempler, FTOs, Cursors and Perseus which is all very fantastic to mix up in Harris or even core fire teams. 
Stat-wise, they're both durable and very flimsy. 6-2 moves, CC 11, BS 13, Fizz 10 with Super Jump, Whip 13 with Religious Tripper, Arm 4, BTS 6, Structure 2, and Rem Press. So we have a proper Rem-like heavy infantry. Weak CC and Fizz and all, which doesn't really matter since you have four wounds until you're off the table. So there's this weird paradox. If you're in CC or Template or Hollow Man, it's going to start losing wounds, but it's gonna take a while to go down because of the Armor 4 and 2 Structure and Rem Press. But when they do go down, you can just run an Engineer up and reroll them back up. This should be easy with Fiddler or a Whip 15 Engineer from earlier. The thing is, that's easier said than done because the Hallmen all rocked small direct templates and they pure link with Perseus who can ward off the brave ones. The wild cards in Tunguska are cheap and a full core of Hollow Men are worth considering since it's like 124 points for 3 Hollow Men, 1 Spitfire and 2 Stempler bots to join in. Both specialists and all of the core are very fast. Cores are a little tough to move so I'll recommend the Harris for more competitive play. Finally are the profiles, all fairly solid with templates either from a boarding shotgun who is a specialist or a chain call. Breaker pistols also work as anti-Ariadna tech but the downside to Hollow Men is that they're pretty limited in their options. You have the aforementioned boarding shotgun, combi rifle, multi rifles, spitfires, and missile launchers. No visors, no snipers, no HMGs. You'll need to wild card in Grenzers or Cursors for that. You have three combi rifle options one base with chain calls, one with a tin bot, which is very nice, and one that is that, but also a hacker, which is nice to have. But as far as nomads go, it's a little weak as both brigadas and girls get tin bot minus sixes and better hackers in the link. But Hollowmen do get pocket repeaters and they do have the hacker with tin bot innately, which is still nice. Next is the pitcher multi rifle, which it might be the best pitcher we have in terms of raw BS, but also maneuverability thanks to 6 2 and super jump, meaning that it's easier to get when you need the repeater to go. However, if you wish to just missile them yourself, we have an option for that with the Hallman missile launcher, which is known for its rocket jumping and it's not bad since it's armor 4, repair is easy, so just be aggressive with it. It's only BS 13, but it can be anywhere very quickly. Finally is the Spitfire, your main gunner for the unit, and it's fine. BS 13 Spitfire, no frenzy, no specialist, just a heavy infantry with the Spitfire. It's fast, tough, and shooting. Simply solid. Hollow men are fantastic heavy infantry that may not make it into every list, but they do make it into a lot of lists. Salamandra Squad, or the Salamandra Squad, is probably the final iconic unit of Tunguska, and possibly of Nomads. Really, it is the main battle tag of Tunguska and Nomads. Not officially in the lore, but definitely in play. Why so iconic? Well, it looks great, and it's so devilishly effective because of its gun. It is one of six units with the Hyper Rapid Magnetic Cannon. It is a Burst 5, Damage 15 with either AP or Shock, or Burst 1, Double Action, with very good range bands. It is generally considered better in every way than a multi-heavy machine gun except an ARO. For completeness, here are the stats. BS 14, plus 1 damage, that's Burst 5, Damage 16. Fizz 17, but dodges and repairs on 11s. Whip 13, so we can avoid a total lockdown. Arm 8 and BTS 9. This is a pretty standard main battle tag stat line and is pretty plain. It does have a heavy flamethrower to ward off melee units or warbands too so it has a lot of angles covered. The Salamandra doesn't link so bring a bot to repair it but it's 2 SWC and 72 points which maybe is its only downside. Alongside guided missile strikes the Salamandra is the main tool to take out problematic pieces such as core linked heavy infantry or other tags as it's much more likely to win the face-to-face -face, thanks to that hyper-rapid magnetic cannon and can purposely take fights in its bad ranges to disadvantage others since it has a lot of zeros and very few minus threes. Generally consider the tag if tags are your thing. The Lunk Cod. Look, I'm at 6,000 words in my script at this point, so I'm going to be blunt and skip a few bots, starting with the Lunk Hoid. It's not great. It lacks a reason to take it that is not already done elsewhere. Mine Layers is done just as well by the Puppet Masters for cheaper. The bot is fine with good move BS12 with a heavy shotgun climbing plus, so you can use it aggressively. Arm 3 and BTS 6 is nice, and Rempless is a plus point, but it's still at 4, so it's a huge base to lug around, and it starts in your drop zone, which for a pseudo warband with a heavy shotgun is not really worth it. Only take this if you like the model. A much better bot now, the Meteor Zone is a forward observing bot that can parachute or combat jump and has a boarding shotgun option. I think I prefer the combi rifle option but that's a preference not a recommendation. Meteors are pretty similar to Stemplars except they get Fizz 11 and BTS 6 over 10 and 3 respectively. 
the idea of a parachuting specialist who can flash pulse and act as a repeater is fairly strong. Consider this a multi-role unit. You can shoot, you can use a technical weapon, or you can set up a hack. Stemplars are your forward observing bots but not combat jumping. As a cheaper order or solo specialist they do some work especially as backup specialists. Our other midfielders can do the job well enough and are competition for the Stemplars but they are more expensive and are vulnerable. Stemplars do act as a cheap Harris core filler for the Hollow Man in the naming Harris at 17 points which gets you climbing plus and super jump so nice mobility to keep up with all those fast mobile shooters with ease. Keep Stemplers in mind as you build your list. When you need them in a Harris, you'll be thankful. Cyclones are better than Lunk Nods. Not massively, but enough that I'm considering them in lists. Why? Well, it's a rim with a bunch of shooting kit. Like other Sputniks, it's got BS-12, Arm-3 and BTS-6 and only has one wound. It's rim press, so it's decently durable, but you may need Fiddler or a Clockmaker sitting nearby. The Cyclone is a warband and I think you're going to be taking it more likely in a core link just to make better use of the Fuhrbark marksmanship or Burst 3 in ARO alongside 6 cents to compromise its X and 360 degree visors. Although an aggressive Harris could still be useful. Profile wise both are good options. The picture chain rifle on all profiles with either Fuhrbark or Spitfire both are good options thanks to the X viver removing a lot of the minus 3 range bands. This helps the Spitfire more since the minus 3 on the Fuhrbark basically overlaps with the chain rifle. The chain rifle is even better with the 360 degree visor because you can't be snuck up upon. Additionally the pictures and the X visors are a really nice combo and can result in a very swift guided strike. For two points more you can take the forward deployment plus four inches but this comes quickly into the issue with the cyclone. It's pretty expensive for one wound and 33 points. The hollow man picture is 31 points which is not a great comparison but it's worth comparing. There are cheaper pitchers and cheaper forward deploying REM options out there. I want to try out with cheer killers and fiddlers as that could be fun, but this isn't something I normally reach for. Vertigo Zond is our guided missile bot. We are nomads. We do guided missile strikes. It is our main way to remove problems. Like tags and panel, the Vertigo is a staple for nomads. It's going to sit back in cover and it's only going to activate when you need something dead. You can use it as a turn to ARO piece with evil bots, but I don't think that's required or worth it since you are loaded to the heavens with other arbalative pieces. Me playing Tunguska is the story of how I learned to stop worrying and love the missile bots. I could rehash a lot of points from my reinforcement video except with the caveats that it's not constrained by points and its fire teams are much better. Just as a reminder, the Vostok is generally considered the best combat rem in the game with BS-12, Arm-3, BTS-6, 2 Structure, Immunity AP and Mid-6. It also has Climbing Plus so you can't hide from the literal tank with its Mark 12 plus 1 damage. Being a ram and not a heavy infantry, unlike our hollow men, the Vostok can be buffed by an evil hacker to give it functionally BS-15 with min-6 immunity AP. It is definitely up there in the terms of things I do not want to have a straight fight with. The Vostok is a wild card and can form the naming fire team, so you can really pick what you want to escort. Further, Vostok Stemplar is a classic as it's cheap and a pain to put down permanently. The Cheer Killer instead of a Stemplar is cheaper and now worth considering since Stemplars don't give tactical awareness. Renzer's Jelena or a MSV2 cheer killer could also come along with the Vostok for a useful, compact and somewhat sturdy Harris. Consider the Vostok for your Harrises or duos. It could be a terror on the table that brings all the advantages of a REM and heavy infantry. Spectres are the hidden deployment infiltrators for Tunguska and they're pretty good. Like all of Tunguska, they are kind of expensive. They are BS-12, min-6, hidden deployment camo, stealth, Fizz 12, so in theory could over infiltrate. Whip 14, which makes it a good specialist, Arm 1 and BTS 3. Profile wise, we have 6 in it, used to be a bit worse. The multi sniper is nice and could be used to take out an approaching warband that's not expecting it. The SMG EM mine deep rep is the cheapest, I think almost the best profile. Having more deployable repeaters is not a bad thing, but it does require breaking camel, which is a pain. I think the better profile might be the killer hacking device SMG which is only 2 points more and a specialist that can throw trinities on 17s and impose a minus 3 with surprise attack which is nasty. The boarding shotgun forward observer is nice but also not as nice, it's squishy but a hidden deployment into a forward observer is always cheeky and fun. 
Finally, there are two hacker profiles, which I think is a good upgrade in theory over the killer hacking device, but 35 points for a one wound hacker is just too steep for my blood. It's always worth considering the Spectre, but I think the Heckler can do its job at least equally, but better. Although, hidden deployment is a big upgrade. Dima is the saving grace of Tunguska and this video. Dima is a modern warband character, so he's pretty good. Not Uberfall Commando good, but still got a pummel at night in melee, which is a good benchmark, even as an MO player. Stats are good with 6-2 move, CC23 with Natural Born Warrior, Martial Arts 1, Berserk, an AP plus DA CCW on damage 15, and a heavy pistol plus 1 burst. This represents some great mailing and a great way to pick something and bully it. BS11 with a chain rifle and that previously mentioned heavy pistol, Fizz14 with smoke grenades and that's the upper tier of warbands already, Whip12, Arm1, BTS3 and Structure, more target for the Clockmaker. He is also dodge plus 2 inches, immunity shock and metachemistry reroll. Before I talk about how to use him I want to touch on metachem as the options are wild. Basic stuff like climbing plus super jump plus 6 BTS or arm 1 and bioimmunity are solid. Then you get the better ones like plus 3 fizz, no wound incapacitation, regen and move 6-4 plus super jump. The chance to get climbing plus and berserk or smoke on 17s before range or to hit with damage 17 AP plus DA is wild but it can get better. Dogged plus total immunity is fantastic, plus 3 fizz Plus regen is also great because it whoops unconscious, better roll 17 or less to stand up, or finally 8-4 plus climbing plus, which is only 5%, but if you get it, it's a 12 inch charge up the wall, rare but memorable. With reroll, try and chance it for the one that you want. With Diva, there's really not a bad option here. How to use him? Well, he's a less good, still amazing dog warrior S unit, but smaller, more agile, but equally is it deadly but not durable. Use him to run up the board, smoke so your other fire teams can follow up and move around more freely. He can also be a missile, smoking for others is fine, but killing instead is better because lord knows he can manage it. Dima adds the much needed cheap and effective orders that Tunga lacks and smoke. Genuinely considered Dima, I'm often reaching for him in my lists. Extreme Zealand Krieger are one of the new warbands that Tunguskin needed, and the Extreme Zealand Krieger is probably the worst of the three, but it's still worth considering. Why? Well, they are pretty good, but with some issues. They're impetuous and irregular, and that's fine. It bulks up Tunguskin's low end since they're only about nine points. It rocks CC23, Natural Born Warrior, CC-3, and Berserk, which are all very solid. I believe the fluff here is that it's a former Chimera, and it shows. BS10, but who cares? Fizz 15, which is great, because it's got a damage 15 DACCW, and it smokes on 18s, which is also nice. Whip 12, Arm 1, BDS3, Viral Immunity, and Shock Immunity, which is neat to ignore Viral Trippers. The big issue with this unit is that it's Silhouette 5 and 4-4 four, four move, and from experience it's fine, but it's slow to move around. Which is maybe why I recommend this as a corner guard rather than an active attack tripper. Oh, and it's Structure, so Park is on next to it. Profile wise, you have an okay one and a good one. The light shotgun, smoke grenade, heavy pistol and DACCW is a better defensive fork, but I think it's worse overall since it's not burst 2 CC in active. The Pulsar, which is a bigger template against BTS, keeps the smoke and a heavy pistol plus one burst, which are really nice to build units with martial arts and no shock immunity. Or you can berserk with that burst too. It has a DACCW as well. Overall, I like the Extreme Zealand Krieger. People like it more than me, so take them if you want to defend or you don't mind the speed when advancing up the table. I feel like I've talked up Perseus this entire video, and so is he worth it? Yes, or well, he's not a bad unit at all, until the Zealand Krieger crew showed up. He was one of two smoke users and was the only one that was linkable. Still is. He rocks in melee CC23, martial arts 3, DACCW on damage 15 and heavy pistols plus 1 burst. His model does look great with those pistols. BS13 with a breaker combi plus 1 damage and a nano pulsar with the Myrmidon min minus 6. It is a very nice but it's not uber gunfighter material and it will be useful as you close the gaps to melee. Fizz13 with stealth and smokes on 16s with a dodge plus 1 inch is all solid. Finally, Whip 13, Arm 2, and NWI with no shock immunity. 
two identical profiles are differentiated by the fact that he has super jump on one and that's the one that can form the naming Harris or jump in the Holloman Harris to follow their bunny hops. Raul might be better in melee but I think Perseus can win more fights in active with the heavy pistols and that's still damage 14 shock. I think I like Perseus more. I have no reason to back this up other than I think he's really cool. Should you take him? M maybe. He can save a hollow man or a robot from warband. Even McMurrah has to be careful around him and that's from personal experience. If you want a rundown of Wolfgang, I've covered him before. He's an exceedingly solid 2 true wound warband with martial arts 3, dodging on 17, berserking up walls with a plus 3 and more melee weapons than arms. The multi-rifle plus one burst can mean burst 5 AP or 3 DA in a Harris which can hurt. Unlike his restrictive links in Tunguska, he is a full wild card counting as a bounty hunter but I see him in more of a Harris or duo with a fast unit to fling him up the board or to follow Holloman naming or bounty hunter Harris as proper melee defense or offense really. Wolvers are the best melee archetype, use them. Final unit of Tunguska, unless Corvus Belly adds in one between writing and recording, which would be nice but thoroughly unexpected. The final edition from Aftermath update and is very similar to Dima and the Extreme Zillin Carrier, but it's Silhouette 2, still 4 4 move and impetuous and irregular, and provides more low cost orders in Tunguska so we can pay for the good stuff and still hit 15 orders. Their stats are CC 23 with Berserk, CC Attack minus 3, and Natural Born Warrior, which is all great. BS10, Fizz13 with Metachemistry Reroll, C Dima for why that's great, Whip12, Arm1, BTS3, and they have Structure1. They have the same profiles as the Extreme Zealand Krieger, and I think my opinion is the same. Pulsar, Heavy Pistol, plus one birth, to roll something in melee. I have either two or one and Dima in most of my Tunguska lists, so consider the Zealand Krieger. So that was my video on pretty much every unit in Tunguska. Hopefully you now have a better idea of what this sectorial entails, because I certainly do. This was a huge video, so remember to like and subscribe for more, and let me know your favourite Tunguska units in the comment below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.